Llewellyn King here, co-host of MECFS Alert. A lot of excitement among patients about what is called the Norwegian treatment or the Norwegian therapy. Here from Norway to tell us about it is Torsten Paulrod. Torsten, welcome to the broadcast. Thank tell you. us about the experience and the hope and the limitations of where we are now. Thank you so much. So two physicians in uh, Bergen, Norway, basically found by accident that uh, B-cell depletion agents do help patients with uh, CFS to, um, to really almost get, get back fully into work. And uh, so there was one, there was the first patient, patient number zero, was a patient which has had uh, cancer as well as a chronic fatigue syndrome. And after a couple of months of treatment, which is a normal treatment for that kind of cancer that person has had, all CFS symptoms have been gone. And then they tried to understand what kind of medication they were giving to that patient. And then, were then they, try, uh, they thought they identified one of the uh, compounds. And then they did, um, they did um, uh, give that to a couple of pilot patients after it was approved by the ethical committee because obviously you are not allowed to use drugs which are not approved on patients and uh, without getting through the ethical committee. And well, they have done all this paperwork and it worked out well for the pilot patients and that was published some time ago. And uh, then uh, people got really excited and they have been running double blinded clinical, clinical trials. A randomized double blinded clinical trial. That means where the physicians didn't know which patient group did obtain the treatment of uh, including basically there was B cell depletion agents and which patients did, not, did just obtain the salt water injections. And uh, it showed that in that clinical trials with 30 patients, 67% of the people who did uh, obtain those compounds for which did B-shell depletions in, in the body have had a benefit from the treatment. And that has been published in uh, PLOS ONE recently. PLOS ONE is a well accepted, uh, peer reviewed scientific journal and it has been uh, in the news in Europe quite a bit, especially in Norway and European countries. And, but the current media coverage in, uh, in, in the US uh, was somewhat limited. And currently we are looking for partners in the pharmaceutical industry who want to team up for clinical trials. And uh, well, you basically can put a name tag to those companies who do have those compounds in a pipeline. If not, if one company is Rush, the next one is Genetech. And Genetech is basically the American branch of Rush nowadays. The other, the other companies who have access to those compounds are GlaxoSmithKline and Human Genome Sciences. But uh, so far, the interest of uh, the pharmaceutical industry is uh, just not existing. These compounds have not been used to this point in time to treat cancer in the US. Is that correct? No, no, that's not correct. All those compounds, for example, uh, this rituximab, which is uh, Matera, that is something which is, uh, is produced by Roche and it is used for cancer treatment in the United States. So the physicians in the US do uh, know the side effects and do know how to handle that stuff. Uh, human genome sciences now recently got approval, FDA approval, for the treatment of lupus. Uh, that was, I think it was this year. But, and that, that, those compounds are also doing B cell depletions. Why do you feel there's some reluctance for these uh, uh, companies to be interested in the events? I don't know, it's really hard to tell. I think it is most of the people do not realize that that is a severe disease. And if you, if you listen to the, uh, the researchers who have been running the clinical trials in Norway, they, uh, they are by training their oncologists, so they are treating cancer patients on a daily basis, and they claim that those patients are really affected as securely as late stage cancer patients. And I think that is something which has not been really uh, fully understood by, by society. 
And why, why is it so expensive? We've been told uh, that it's seventy thousand dollars for an infusion. That's a lot of money. Well, you know, but uh, you do have to understand pharmaceutical industry as well because they did put a lot of money into development of those sort of biologics, uh, antibodies. It's really, it's a, it's a lot of effort to uh, really con to, to really produce that stuff and test it. And so I do have some, I do understand that this uh, has a price tag. And it's not the price tag of aspirin, you know, which people found uh, by accident, you know, while walking around the woods and just chewing on some uh, some rum sticks. So that is a totally different uh, ball game. Right? Finally, how do we guard against too much hope in case down the road maybe this will be for a year or not five uh, new drugs tend to be oversold. The expectation is definitely too high. I, I think that worry. Well, it, it is definitely, it, you really have to be aware of the fact that CFS come, you don't have a biomarker, so you cannot pick all the patients which are responsive to that treatment. And I'll doubt it that all patients which are currently diagnosed with CFS and me are, are basically uh, uh, included in the group which will be responsive to that treatment. Thank you so much. Well, I'm very good luck. It's promising. Thank you.